if it does affect you, it really does affect us. We have to chat yeah. about it. Now, the city of Chwane has been left in the dark after several electricity pylons fell onto the N4 highway, causing extensive damage and cutting off power to thousands of households. Uh, the cause of the, uh, the collapse, of course, vandalism and theft, which was terrible to hear. Criminals stripped metal from the base of the pylons for illegal resale, compromising the infrastructure and creating a dangerous situation for motorists and residents alike. Now, today, we have that special guest, a privilege, uh, speaking with the newly appointed mayor of Chwane, uh, Salir Brink, who will shed some light on the situation and discuss what they are doing to prevent similar incidents in the future. Salir, uh, very good morning. Uh, first of all, from a PR perspective, well done for stepping up and putting yourself front and centre to do exactly what you're doing right now, because there are so many questions, and this obviously is affecting so many people. I'm sure you've had a pretty tough week. Just break it down for us. Talk to us about the extent of the damage yeah. to the power lines. How big is your problem this week? So, indeed, it's been uh, quite a week. Um, to give you an idea of the extent of the damage, the city of Tswane uses about 2,500, 2,600 megawatts of electricity. And this incident knocked out 300 megawatts wow, of electricity. Yeah. So, massive power outage. Seven electricity pylons knocked down. It was clear that three of them had been interfered with. We'll still investigate the particulars of it. But there was clearly an attempt at vandalism or theft, stripping the metal, as you mentioned. So uh, it plunged large parts of Pretoria East, Mamalodi, Watlu, Yesteris, and even parts of Centurion in the north of Pretoria in the dark. We were able to reroute electricity from other sources to about 40% of the affected area within a few hours. Uh, but that still left Mamalodi, Yesteris, Watlu Industrial, and you know, uh, I saw the, the spokesperson for Ford, which is yeah. a major company yeah. in Pretoria, major employer, contributor to the economy, saying that the production of cars had to stop completely, 750 cars that they yeah. couldn't produce. And I said to the team, we simply have to make a plan to accommodate on a temporary basis uh, Watlu Industrial as well as Yesteris and, and Mamalodi in particular and the other areas. So those temporary measures have been put in place and now... Most of the uh, areas that have been affected are restored. There are only pockets where, for technical reasons, they don't have electricity. But let me just emphasize that this backfeeding, uh, effectively the rerouting of electricity, yeah. is a temporary measure until we can replace those pylons, which is still going to take some time. The electricity supply is going to be unstable, but happily, uh, most of Tswane has got electricity this right. morning. Well, well done for the, the hard work in rerouting and ensuring that uh, at least 40% uh, of the power is restored. Of course, we wait for uh, the complete restoration for the entire city as well. But I'd like to ask about how the city is planning to address the issue of vandalism and theft of critical infrastructure in the future. I know with any incident like this, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anxiety, and one can only wonder how do you mitigate any sort of future circumstances when we know something like this can happen and on this scale? Yeah, so just to be clear, I think uh, by today we, we have about 90 or 95 uh, percent reconnected, no longer 40 percent. So, well done. Um, you know, that's good news. But on the issue of securing our infrastructure, it's really difficult for a municipality to police uh, all of the installations that have to be policed. Remember that a metropolitan police department, Metro Cops, have got three core functions. Yeah. Bylaw enforced traffic control and visible policing. We simply don't have the resources for crime intelligence and to go yeah. after sophisticated syndicates. Where we do have cable theft units, they, their resources are stretched to the hilt. So uh, it's really important that the South African police investigate this matter. We are following up with them. This should be regarded as a serious commercial crime because we're talking about the capital city here. Just think about it. It's not just the municipality that's affected. If somebody wants to knock out the national government, um, and it's this easy to do it, I think the South African police have to take this extremely seriously. Yeah. But from our side as a municipality, it's clear to me that we are going to have to invest in technology, whether drones or telemetric systems. I believe the technology is out there. I just 
think that government is still in an analog age. You know, our procurement yeah. process are very, very uh, complicated, and you know, the private sector can respond immediately. And let me just say, when these power lines were knocked out, it were it was private security companies, uh, Lakeside Forum, and 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 private uh, security measures that secured the infrastructure for the for the time. So I just sure. want to say thank you everyone, the CPFs, the private security companies, who assist with the city of Tswane to secure the infrastructure. Um, I mean, we could continue this probably for about another hour, and I, I am very well aware that you obviously are very pressed for time right now. So once again, thanking you so much yep. for putting yourself out there to be able to answer these questions. We really do appreciate it. I have a feeling we're going to be joining you for an update over the coming weeks because this feels like a problem that is not just being experienced in your neck of the woods, but potentially could hit other areas of the country. So hopefully other people are taking on board what you are saying this morning. But thank you so much for representing your people in this way today. Um, and good luck with the rest of this week and next week. And we'll certainly stay closely tied to you to get updates. Um, but well done on addressing the problem as you have so far. Thanks very much. I appreciate the chance to talk to, talk to you. If you are affected in these areas, if you see infrastructure that is affected in any way, bits of metal being stripped, report it. You have a role to play as well. When we talk about citizen reporting and the role that we have to play within our communities, you can have your voice heard. In fact, now probably more than yeah. ever before. If you've been affected, let us know. We want to know how. Are you a small business that's been affected? How much has it cost you? We need to know these things so that government can put into place the measures to prevent it happening again. But we need your voice to contribute. So please, 063-408-8863. How have you been affected by this latest energy crisis?